Okay guys, welcome back. I assume you have watched my other video on the uh, how to calculate mechanical advantage in a pulley system, um, particularly uh, in the context of setting up holds for climbing. Uh, in the last video we went through the basics of how to calculate tension um, or how to calculate leverage I guess and how you increase the tension through a pulley system and also we looked at uh, with a pulley and a prusik how that worked to transfer tension. Um, what we're going to look at now is we're going to extend that a little bit and look at a few different setups. Um, so we're going to start with a five, a five to one setup. Um, let's just quickly touch on the key assumptions from the last video. So the first key assumption was about tension through a pulley. And we made the assumption that as a rope or cord or line passes through a frictionless pulley, that tension everywhere on that cord must be uh, the same. Um, we also made the assumption that for what we're talking about here, um, all pulleys are perfectly frictionless. So in reality, we know that a, as rope goes through a carabiner, it actually experiences friction. Um, and as a result, we would lose some of our mechanical advantage every time we go through a carabiner. But for the purposes of what we're doing here, um, we assume that every pulley or carabiner is frictionless. Okay, so similar to the last movie, um, what we've got, what we've got here is a uh, a climber, um, and that climber is about to have someone belaying them. So similar to last time, um, maybe at the top of the cliff, we've got a top belay with a power point and a strong point set up. Uh, might be bollard, might be some gear that you've put in, and we've got the free end, and we've got someone doing the uh, doing the belaying. So in here, we would have an ATC. Okay, so that's the setup. I'm just going to get rid of that. Now, like last time, uh, we're going to say, hey, we're stuck. But this time, we're going to want a bit more purchase than the basic three to one we did. So we're going to look at how do we set up a five to one system. So often, we go to a five to one after we first tried a three to one. So um, if we say, this is what the belay, belayer is set up initially. So we're going to have a um, have a prusik around the climbing line up to a pulley. When I say pulley, likely to be a carabiner. Um, and as we saw in the last video, that's quite comfortably a, a three to one. But what's actually going to happen here is we're going to decide that's not enough purchase. So uh, fortunately, we had another strong point up here. Um, it's hard to draw these on top of each other when in, in the real world they'd probably be just off the same strong point. Um, so let's just put another pull in. So what we're going to do is go back down and get another purchase in. I'm just going to draw that like that for now. So effectively off that prusik, um, we'll just extend it slightly and we'll have another pulley in here. So maybe you've got a prusik with a figure eight in the middle of it. So two loops, couple of carabiners, um, and and now we've created a five to one. Okay, but how do we know it's five to one? That's the point of this exercise: um, is, is to look at how do we analyze the system to prove that we know it's definitely a five to one. So, like last time, we'll start with tension. So the uh, the rescuer, instructor, belayer um, can apply a certain amount of force to the to the rope. Um, we'll call that amount of force T for tension. So like last time, we said that uh, tension must remain constant in a cord. So that's fine. Uh, we've got tension down here, down here, just before this pulley. Let's just zoom in a bit. It's going to get a bit busy in here. So just before the pulley, we've got tension here. Just after the pulley, we've got tension again. Okay, that's fine. If we go back up to this top pulley, got tension before, tension after, we know that's continuous. And tension just before the pulley here, just after the pulley, same again, same again, all the way down to just above the prusik tension. Cool. So, like last time, what we're becoming interested in is what's going on around the pulleys and the prusiks and how does that transfer load down the cord? down to the prusik into the main line. 
So let's start with, let's start with this section here. So we've got a pulley tension, tension. This section in here, what's it is here? What's it got to be? 2T, okay? We're balancing the forces around that pulley. So, what does that mean? This section, 2T. Okay, that's fine. So now let's have a look at this second pulley. So let's have a look at this area. This is where it's a bit different to anything we've seen so far. But the principles are the same. So in that section, we've got our pulley, we've got our prussic going down, but this time we've got a prussic going up and two lines going up. Tension in the cord, always T. But what's the tension? What's going on with this extra uh, prussic or part of the prussic? As we just calculated, two T. So to balance 1t plus 2t plus 1t, 4t is effectively what we get at the bottom of this pulley. So I should turn that off. So below here, we've got 4t. I think you're quickly starting to see how this is going to become a 5 to 1. So by having two pulleys here, and you can see effectively got four single T's or uh, these two T's have compiled into this one T and then we can draw, draw a line around that pulley, which is what we did. We end up with four T coming through the prussic into the main line. And we've got this other just residual tension as well. So we end up, we end up with a five to one hole. So I know I went a bit quicker then. I hope that makes sense. Um, perhaps if it didn't, maybe go back and watch the last video again, just to have a look at the technique that we're using to analyze these problems. Now, I wanna just go and quickly visit um, another one, which is a six to one. And the reason why is it can just be a little bit, um, there's a little bit of a difference in, in the, some of the, the way the tension travels through the cord. Okay. So I'll just quickly draw the setup. Um, it's not too hard. Um, so for this, we're gonna go down through a pulley with a prussic on it. We go back up. And this time what we're gonna do is tie off. So that's some sort of knot. If you can't tie knots, tie lots. Don't do that not if you're a climbing instructor. Okay. So what we're going to do, pulley here, down to a prussic. Pulley here, down to a prussic. Strong point, belayer. Okay, it's a usual process. We apply tension at the start of the cord, that's great. Now tension goes down through the first pulley, no problem, all normal, all normal. And we can probably even here, just from what we've done before, we can quickly see that that's gonna be 2T, so that's fine. But what happens at this knot? We've got tension going in. What's coming out? Well, the answer is nothing. It's actually the tension on this side of the cord is irrelevant of the tension on this side of the cord because of the knot. The knot is effectively, um, right before our assumption was tension remains constant through a frictionless pulley. Well, if we put a knot in, clearly that's not frictionless, it's completely fixed. So as you can imagine, if we start pulling up on this prussic, the line above it will go completely slack because of this knot. So there's actually no tension in the cord here. So we've got 2T coming out of this prussic to the cord below it. 2t. 
What do we have on the other side of this chord now? 2t. We're back to our original assumption that in a continuous piece of chord, tension must remain constant. The chord from below the prussic here is continuous all the way around both those pulleys until we get to this fixed prussic again. Okay, so let's have a look at this pulley here again. 2T, 2T, both pulling up. In the prussic cord itself, we must have 4T. So interestingly, what you can see has happened. We now have 4T from the prussic. 2T from the residual tension in this cord, 6T going to the climber. So we end up with a 6 to 1. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but we can make a slight change here and take this knot out of the system. So if we take that knot out, it's going to change all of our downstream residual tensions. So if instead of a knot, we decided to put in another pulley, now we've got continuous cord down to this prussic. So before we had 2T going into the prussic with nothing above it. Now we've got 3T going in. That's interesting. 3T as before. 3T, 3T, 3T. You can see that's made a huge difference though because if we've got 3T and 3T either side of this pulley, below it we've now got 6. That's what we had as the end result before. Now we've got 3T and 6T going into the final prussic. What do we achieve? 9T to the climber. So it's quite an interesting setup if you really needed the extra purchase just by simply removing that knot uh, and turning it into a pulley we managed to increase the purchase from 6 to 1 to 9 to 1. Now we could go further um, and, and get up to an 11 to 1, but I don't think that's really practical. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, if anybody wants to contact me about this because they're not quite sure or wants a further explanation, um, then feel free to do so through Surya. Um, my name's Jono. If you contact the guys there, they'll be able to put you in touch with me. Um, best of luck. Hope it works out. Uh, if you need to, feel free to watch these again.